Tensions have escalated in Bangladesh over government job quarters. News agencies are reporting that at least 50 people, including 13 police officials, have been killed and dozens more injured in a series of deadly clashes that broke out across the country. The Bangladesh government has put the, to the death toll at 28. A fresh round of violence broke out, centering on the non-cooperation movement called by student protesters. Early in the day, clashes broke out when thousands of protesters crowded into a central Dhaka square. The protesters attending a non-cooperation program faced fierce opposition from supporters of the Awami League. Police fired tear gas and lobbed stun grenades to disperse the protesters, calling for Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to resign. Violence spread like wildfire as demonstrators blocked major highways. University teachers have proposed an interim government, while the movement called for a long march to Dhaka on Tuesday. In the face of clashes, the Home Ministry imposed an indefinite nationwide curfew. Railways and internet services remain suspended amid the ongoing crisis. The Bangladesh government has announced three days of public holiday from Monday. Banks will remain shut during these days. This is the first time Bangladesh government has taken such a step in the face of protests that began last month. We want the government to resign. We would all then go back to the golden times we had in the past. This is why I came down to the streets. Take a look at this Bangladesh map. Apart from Dhaka, at least 15 districts in Bangladesh reported violent clashes. This is on the first day of the non-cooperation movement announced by the anti-discrimination students' movement. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina says those engaging in sabotage across Bangladesh are not students but terrorists. She urged people to suppress them with a firm hand. Prime Minister Hasina made this remark after chairing a national security panel meeting. The meeting came as renewed violence spread to several parts of the country. Bangladesh INB minister has released a video of mobs attacking places like hospitals this morning. He said the protests show true colors of the protesters. Remember, protesters have dismissed Hasina's invitation for a dialogue aimed at quelling the escalating violence. They consolidated their demands into a unified call for the government's resignation. The fresh round of violence has erupted days after over 200 people lost their lives in violent clashes demanding an end to the quarter system. The government jobs quarter reserved 30% of government jobs for relatives of veterans who fought for Bangladesh's independence in 1971. Joining us now is Veena Sikri, is a former High Commissioner to Bangladesh from New Delhi. Ambassador Sikri, thank you very much for making time for us and welcome to thank We you. On Wild with One. Bangladesh is literally on the brink as we speak. These students, which have become a mass yeah. movement, are threatening the future of the country. Most are demanding the Prime Minister to resign, besides her calling for dialogue. What could happen if the protests are not quelled at the moment? or the students' grievances are not met? Um, you know, I think first we have to look at it in two parts. Uh, this began as a quota reform movement, where, as you have correctly explained, uh, the 30% quota that was reserved uh, for uh, children of freedom fighters, uh, the quota reform movement was against that. But we have to remember two points here. Firstly, that in 2018, when Sheikh Hasina was still the prime minister, uh, at that time, the quota reform movement had started. And in response to that, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's government had themselves abolished the quota. So for six years, there has been absolutely no quota in Bangladesh uh, for admission to uh, public services uh, or uh, public sector undertaking. Now, in June 
of this year, uh, somebody went in appeal against that decision of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and the High Court reversed her decision. But her government, Sheikh Hasina's government, again went in appeal to the Supreme Court and said we want to maintain our earlier decision that there will be no quota at all. So the point is that Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and the students have been on the same page all along. They have shared an identity. She has given full respect to the students for their demands. Only in the month of July, on around 15th of July, that is when the problem started because um, soon after a press conference that Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina had given uh, on return from uh, her visit to China, uh, in response to a question, uh, she said, yes, the quota had been given for children of freedom fighters and they deserved it at that time. Uh, you know, it's the Razakars will not... Radhakar's children will not get that quota. Radhakar's are uh, of the term symbolic of those who oppose the liberation war, who were supporting Pakistan in the liberation war. So that was taken up by the students as if they had been called Radhakar's, and some violence broke out. The Bangladesh Awami League came into the violence. The uh, Shibir, the jamaat e islami students wing, they came into the violence. There was huge clashes. A lot of students lost their lives. And the students were very upset, naturally, it is quite understandable that students have lost their lives. And in a week of violence, about 200 students and policemen and other civilians lost their lives. In fact, in a student, in a um, newspaper report in Dhaka this morning, uh, the figure given was that out of these 204 who have died, 53 were students and the rest were either policemen or civilians or, or other uh, you know, people. So I think this is what the students are wanting, a judicial inquiry. But the demand of the studa, students for the quota reform movement were met completely when the Supreme Court gave its judgment on the 21st of July mm -hmm. and accepted whatever they wanted. Now there will only be a 5% quota for children of freedom fighters and a 2% additional quota for other minorities. And that's it. So that is in that sense, the students have got their demands. But now it is beyond that. They are looking at, um, you know, wanting a judicial inquiry has been announced by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. But the demand is now that she must step down. All right. And um, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that, Madam Ambassador, uh, because we've seen in recent protests all around the world, even in Africa, even in Europe, even in America, when these protests happen, they usually call for the government to resign, most probably the prime minister, most probably the president. In this case, the prime minister. So if the prime minister does resign, then what? Well, at the moment, what has happened is that in response to, the design, uh, to this demand uh, for the prime minister to resign, followed up by a 15-point demand of complete non-cooperation with the government, that is no payment of taxes, etc. Yesterday and today, they have been high-level meetings by the armed forces in Bangladesh. And in, in the meeting yesterday, the announcement by the armed forces was that we will stand with the people of Bangladesh and with the state. And today there was a National Security Council meeting, as you have yourself mentioned. And after that, they agreed, all these agencies, the armed forces, intelligence agencies and others have agreed that this movement seems to have morphed into something else and they decided that the people who are there are not at all not all the students the students demands are being met and those who are causing mayhem are actually going to be called as terrorists throughout the day today people have died policemen have died the protesters have died you cannot even call them students anymore they're now protesters and the next three days will give us an answer to the question you have asked because there is a complete lockdown now the curfew has begun as of six o'clock this evening and they will uh, the the advisory is that nobody should come out on the streets for the next three days i suppose that this has been done in response to a demand by the protesters that they would do a march onto dhaka onto the capital city of dhaka so we have to watch for the next three days to see how it will pan out and okay. uh, what will happen and what will the students do the protesters what will they do i think that uh, you are right there are many very often there's a dissatisfaction with the government but i think the purpose the main idea of a democracy a constitutional democracy is to have a peaceful change of government through elections or any other means now right. we have seen some of the people are coming out asking for constitutional changes saying we are going to have this government and that government you know all kinds of demands are there which uh, which many are also calling a bit anarchic because they don't know what will happen. You ask the Prime Minister to step down, what happens after that? What right. do the armed forces Madam do? What Ambassador, do sorry to cut you short, but uh, we are out of time now. Uh, thank you very much for okay. talking to us today. Uh, those are very powerful insights that you've given us on We On Wild as One. I've been talking to 
Ambassador Veena Sikri, who's a former High Commissioner to Bangladesh from New Delhi. Ambassador, thank you. Thank you. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.